So guys, you wanna know how I created this in Blender? So keep watching this video till the end. So to start with, we need our hand rig, which is a simple rigify bone setup and controller setup. And we have our can rig, which is just two control set of controller controlling the two segment of can and parented to the main can. And the can is parented to the hand bowl. I added a camera as far as our reference and match it to the hands. And now we are going to pose our hands as you can see as the reference. So just wait and see. I'm just disabling some modifier to get some better performance. Just try to match fairly from the reference. It's not that complicated, just a bit little time consuming. You can stretch along with it with scale options. Now for our second arm, we are going to do the same. We are using the IK controllers right now because we don't need FK for that. And we are doing something with fingers, so we can just get a slight dip, dip idea of getting pressure from our hand to the can segment. Now we are done with our first fourth. I'm adding keyframes to it, and we are going to use our reference to get more poses. Our reference have six to five to six poses, and after that we are going to add keyframes to it. So I'm skipping to the next part. We're just posing. So in this part, we are just changing the keyframe interpolation to constant. You have just to press T in the timeline and press the constant icon. Now we are doing same with our can segments. We just have to align them as the reference and our end position. It's not too complicated. Just you need to a little precise or it will clip through our, your hand and it will look bad. But it's not that difficult to do. And after adding keyframe, you have to make it to the constant as well to match our hand animation. So we are going to start the shading. But first, I just added a sun lamp. And if you want to know about the hand shader, you can just watch my previous video. It will show you how to do hand shader. So now we are going to paint the shadows. So first we need an image texture. We are creating it in 4K resolution and naming it hand shadows. Now go to texture painting and disabling the outline modifier or we won't be able to paint over it. Go back to texture painting. I'm adding an invert node and changing our color to white. Now there is a previous image, we need to change it back to our same name as we just created, the hand shadows. And now we are going to paint it. So if you go to stroke, you should enable stabilize the stroke. It will smooth your cursor. And now we can paint it properly. We just need to paint it like that. You just have to follow the reference and paint it as your camera perspective. I'm adding a color ramp to make it sharper. If you go to random mode, you can see the effect of it. And we are going to add more shadows. You just have to follow the reference. And I'm disabling this smooth stroke to paint it easily. I 
and now I'm turning back on. So first, we I'm just adding some outline of the shape and then filling it over with it. There is no shortcut for that option. I don't know why, but I think it's not that big of a deal right now. So we have our hand shadow. We are going to mix it with our mix RGB node, adding a mix. Joining you to the factor and changing it to the shadow color. It's looking a little wacky, maybe because our shadow color does not match with our hand shadow shadows. We need to change it as well. It looks fine now. And after that, we can turn back our outline zone. I remember I disabled it on the outlines modifier tab. And it's look fine now. And select those edges as for our, our reference. We need to create those outlines. And if we extract, extract from our rigged hand, it will be also rigged. So we don't have to worry about animation for it. So I just duplicated that and hide it. And for our thumb, I'm just pressing J to join the vertexes and duplicated those lines. After duplicating, I'm just deleting the other hand. We don't need it. And removing some modifiers, outline and solidify something. And adding a skin modifier. I select all and click on make root. And if you press Ctrl A, you can control the thickness. You have to drag it a lot, or you can just type the values. So after that, we have some outlines, but we need some little adjustment of it. I'm hiding the armature of hand and just adjusting them a little. So I'm adding another subdivision modifier, one one before a skin modifier and one after a skin modifier on the value of one. So we will get some smooth outlines. Just adjust them a little. It's not too difficult to do. We just work on screen space. So now we are going to start with our can shader. So I just hide our hands so we can focus on our can. So I'm deleting the default and adding a simple cell shader. And just picking the color from our reference. If you press E, you can just drag the color you want. I'm adding a layer weight node, adding a color M, change it to the constant and just drag it to get a rim effect. Adding a mix RGB, changing to the add and joining it together. I'm adding screencast key, I forgot to turn it on. And duplicating a color ramp and dragging over it so we can get some one another rim effect, I guess. It's just what I want to see. I'm adding a Voronoi texture. Add a color M. Then instead of using distance, we are using color. Then changing it to the overlay. So we get some imperfect imperfection details you can see. Then for our met above can center, we are using the same shadow center, just tweaking some values and colors. It's fine now, but we need to adjust it so we can get some gradient shadow. I'm using a plain empty to control our texture. I'm pinning the texture so it won't disappear when we select other. Adding a gradient texture and selecting that empty as an object. 
So if we see now, I'm adding a color M. And if we move the empty, we can move the texture as well. And I'm changing it to the sphere, scaling it and adjusting it as our reference. Now we can join it together with the mix color. Maybe we have to multiply it. I'm changing it to the multiply and I'm inverting the color amp. It's fine. And for the above segment, I'm using a simple cell tender and just that's it. We are done with our can. And for the splashes, uh, just a simple shader. You can see on the screen, you can just copy it as it is, nothing is special. As we just, I've added a keyframe as I saw on the reference. So for our floor, I just took a texture from Blender Kit and adjusted it a little. It's just uh, mostly a PBR, uh, nothing special anymore. So we just continue to the next part. To start with our compositing, we need some passes. If you click on here, we can see we have some different passes like ambient occlusion, shadows, and bloom, which is we need to compose it. Ambient occlusion and bloom path only appear if you enable those two. And in the layer properties, we can enable them to see in the composite. It's necessary. And we just going to render it. And we are done with render. And now we go to composite tab. So we have enable the use node, duplicate that, and drag it over. And if you control, control to left click, we get a viewer node. And we can just see the different passes we just checked on our viewport. So we are going to mix it together. I'm adding color ramp on the ambient occlusion. I'm changing it to constant and we drag it so we can get some cells shadows. Instead of soft shadow, we are getting cell shadow now. And we are changing it and adding it to the multiply. So we get some good looking extra and shadow now. And we are adding some more. Now we're changing it to the base, adding a shadows over it, dragging it down, adding a hue saturation node, joining it above, and now we can decrease the value and play with some hue and saturation to get some vibrance effect on the shadows area. And we are going to bloom over and I'm adding an exposure node and increasing the value to make it bright. And we are going to add it to our main. Don't do it a little much or it will burn and it will look unnatural. Do it a little and we are pretty much done with it. So now we just have to render it. Thanks for watching.